Hi, everybody. This is David with Sun Vision Display. We're very excited here to be sharing some special content with you. Uh, we recently have released our indoor monitor, and it has been uh, unbelievably successful. So we wanted to say thank you to everybody that has shown their support. Uh, we have gone in and out of stock twice. Uh, and then everybody has also sent in suggestions, comments, and an incredible amount of support. One of the uh, most popular suggestions has been to have our products reviewed by people who are trusted in the community, uh, namely uh, My Deep Guide. And so based on your recommendation, we reached out and are very happy today to announce a collaboration with My Deep Guide to be reviewing the SunVision Display Indoor Monitor. And I am very happy to warmly welcome Voya, uh, the man behind the channel. Uh, hi, Voya. Nice to see you Hello, today. Uh, it's hi. very good to be here. Awesome. Awesome. Well, welcome. Thank you again. Uh, it's been uh, great talking with you, setting this up. Uh, I can't even describe the excitement we have on our end. And if we have any idea about your fan base, they can't wait to see this either. So. Likewise, I'm also really, really excited that you guys reached out because, um, yeah, as when we typed and when you first reached out, I was actually like, oh, my God, is it possible that somebody's finally doing the, the technology that I've been waiting for for a very long time? So, yeah, definitely. Um, uh, likewise, 100 percent. Likewise. Awesome. Awesome. So um, your fan base knows you very well. And uh, as we were coming to know you, uh, Maybe you could give us a couple of uh, points about the man behind My Deep Guide, who is Void. Yeah. Um, so uh, my deep guide it just started as um, hmm, let's see what happens kind of a thing um, because I never even intended to launch a YouTube channel or anything like that. And for the longest time, like uh, I was filming random videos that I thought would be useful. And uh, back in 2017, I received the first um, e-note-taking tablet that I owned, which was the Remarkable One. And I noticed that there's absolutely zero information online that describes real world stuff. And at back then, it was normal that videos on YouTube last five, seven, maybe 12 minutes. And my first video was like maybe 45 or 47, which was borderline insane. But that was basically like, hey, that, that's what I'm doing. So if there's like two people who find it useful, great. Um, to my shock, there was well over <laughs> two people. Um, and then basically, yeah, things started rolling from there. And then in April, yeah, almost two years ago, exactly, just about just about under two years ago, I decided to kind of try it out as a brand thing, like a My Deep Guide and see what happens if I focus myself and kind of dedicate myself a little bit more and not just have it completely as a side thing. And then things started rolling on and... Yeah, I started to discover more things. People started to support more, and yeah, here we are. That's awesome. Yeah, definitely. Uh, that too added a, a quite a few more zeros after it when people started paying <laughs> attention. <laughs> so yeah, that's all it's good. actually uh, today it's thirty four thousand subscribers today to dinged over. So that's kind of interesting. Did you ever think it would turn into something like this, where you're even talking to us today? No, no, because, um, yeah, as I mentioned, it was a side thing and it is still like a side thing because my primary cons my primary thing is my background is animation, 3D animation. I teach animation. I do video game development. I do consulting. That's my job and that's what I normally do. And still the YouTube thing, even though it is a very nice success and I really, really enjoy using it and creating it, um, it's not a thing that I can... Uh, rely upon yet it's still just a passion project and something that i love and i want to keep it that way i don't want it to cross into an obligation and a thing like that so yeah well the, the support that that you receive again um people were pushing to to have this done i hope that's a testament to the work that you've done and uh, helps continue to support you as you grow and turn this into whatever you want it to be so yeah. uh how about if you could uh, share a little bit about your process if you receive a new item and uh, how you evaluate it or what you use to gauge if uh, this is a good test of the technology or the new advancement? Yeah, so basically depends on the device itself. And um, by nature, I'm incredibly inquisitive. So I like to 
kind of dig deep, hence the name, my deep guide. Um, so, but basically, yeah, I receive a new product. It arrives as a box. So then it becomes, uh, I try to capture the, why do I always make an unboxing and first, first impressions video and then an in-depth review? That's usually the process that I do is because for me, uh, I know that when I purchase something, especially these devices, which are definitely all of those e-ink devices and all of these niche devices that are on the pricier side of things, I try to capture the moment of receiving that item because you wait for it and then you unbox it and kind of what is the first impression? Because I've been on the both sides of the coin, which is a wait for a device, and then I get a little bit disappointed. It's like, well, uh, or maybe, you know, kind of open up and it becomes like, oh my God, this is amazing and it was worth the wait or just okay. So that's one of the things. Um, so that's the, the the unboxing thing and the in-depth guide usually, uh, or in-depth review, usually I spend at least two weeks. That's the bare minimum that I decide to do with a device day in, day out, use it in my daily routines and force myself to use it more than I would normally. And I try to envision and I ask also now that there's support and there's uh, the, the, the community behind it. I also ask like, what are you guys interested in? So then I test these things. I try to test out and put the device through its paces and, and it includes everything like the design, um, build quality, materials used, ergonomics, um, the technology itself, um, features, user interface, like dip, now it branches out depending on what the device is. Um, but yeah, that's basically it. And then I try to, as I test it out, I keep a, at least I, I use Google Notes. That's what I use mostly with the checkboxes. And then I type in all of the thoughts as I'm testing it throughout those two, three weeks. Uh, that Google Notes is open and it's accessible whether I'm on a computer, laptop, or a phone or a tablet, anywhere I am, and I'm using that other device, when a question pops up or a remark pops up, I just write that down. And then when I'm done with that, then I review it, review the notes, sum them up, make a structure, and then you start the filming process. And then, as you know, the lengthy editing process. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, uh... It definitely is, is thorough. I think that one of the reasons why uh, you've seen a lot of the success you have is certainly your commitment to objectivity. A lot of people can put trust in you because your process, even if it is natural to you, is something that people recognize as uh, insightful and something that they can find value in. And so, uh, you know, we respect that as well. Um, that was one thing that, that we picked up on right away is your ability to grab a piece of tech. And when you say it's got value, it does. And if you say that it's got challenges, it does. It, it's not, there's no way to wash it. So um, we're really looking forward to that. Even uh, even things that you can help us learn to grow with, it's something that is all part of the process. And uh, I honestly believe that's why you're uh, seeing a lot of success you have is because of that commitment. So is that something that are you as thorough with that with everything else or in your uh, you know professional life too or just with the hobbies? Uh, yeah, first of all, thank you very much. That's uh, that means a lot. So um, and yes, I am aware of the growing responsibility that that brings with itself. So that's the added level of, OK, have I been thorough? Have I been this and that? So that is something that's also the additional element. As for your question, yeah. Um, Basically, I, I do, I've always always had that issue, which was I was setting uh, the highest expectations I had was of myself. And that's something that I had to kind of tone down over the time. But yeah, it does reflect on to, it's not like perfectionism until the point of like never get anything done. It's more of like a balance of things, uh, kind of squeezing out the maximum out of thing from the time that I have allotted to it. Because for me, the number one thing is, of course, finish. Whatever I start, got to finish it, right? Um, right. But yeah, thorough, um, it, it's, thoroughness is definitely my nature, but I think it's also driven with the inquisitiveness. I'm really, I'm, like deep down, I'm a, I'm a nerd. I'm a, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a deep down nerd. Like, um, I built my own first computer when I was 16, 15 from components and all that kind of stuff. And then, you know, from, from then on, like 
whenever it was, it was me fixing the computer or something like that. And even today, um, the day is coming soon where I need to refresh my workstation. So I'm waiting for that. And that's like one of the most exciting moments is like components arrive and then you unbox them and then you piece it together. So yeah, it's um, there's that element as well. The, the nerdy element as well. Mm -hmm. I agree. I agree. Uh, I've built a few computers here in the last five or 10 years and uh, it's, it's a very fun process. I, I'm definitely in it. Um, yeah. I'm very similar with the inquisitiveness. And that's one thing if uh, we definitely want to see for the inquisitive side and curious uh, with how digital technology has literally exploded into our everyday lives. It's, it's there. We're using it right now to even be able to communicate in real time. And uh, we're curious about some of your thoughts about where you're seeing digital technology going and uh, more specifically on the reflective LCD side, but just in general, it's uh, definitely uh, growing every single day. Yeah. So um, why am I so incredibly excited about the reflective display things? So everybody knows with my deep guide, I'm focusing on e-ink and primarily note-taking devices and some reader devices. And uh, people who just arrive to the channel, they say like, what's the point of this? This is black and white, it's expensive and it's slow. Like what the hell is the point? And the number one thing is like, okay, go outside on a sunny day and compare it with your phone or your laptop and see what you see. The point number two is check your battery consumption and see what you get. And point number three is check your health and start feeling the areas around your eyes, the around your face and everything actually starting to relax as you start to adopt these things. And when you actually start reading a little bit more into how does the LED and the backlight uh, uh, diodes, how they kind of basically glare at us, and what that um, blue light is actually doing to your uh, sleep patterns and you know, on the biology side of things, you actually get to see that there's, there are bigger ramifications. Now, I grew up with monitors like glaring at me constantly. And that's why I am excited about the reflective LCDs because as good as the e-ink technology is, it is incredibly limited. Uh, on the other hand, so you want something that's the best of both worlds. You want something that's going to be as fast as a normal display, not the Uber gaming displays, but the normal display has the colors, has the resolution, has all of these things, yet it doesn't glow. It doesn't have those uh, uh, harmful effects. And there have been some tech attempts, as you probably <laughs> very well know, but they never kind of picked up. And for me, the reflective LCD thing just made most sense because in theory it's this is what i'm imagining because i haven't still seen it yet but um what i'm imagining is that you get something that's maybe not identical to paper oh well if it is as a as a paper display that would be great but close to what you would get as a paper surface so that basically you get the display a part of your environment lighting which is the best thing ever. So for me and my use case scenario. And uh, so, so yeah, that, that, that's something that I'm very excited to kind of see and uh, uh, kind of for, for real. Mm -hmm. with, your, uh, with your background, especially your professional background, you're around uh, monitors and designing two monitors. Um, have you had a lot of experience, even if it's been just reading uh, spec sheets or anything about how reflective LCDs work? Or what is your background before the SVD monitor or understanding of what reflective LCDs are? Well, uh, just very basic, um, kind of basic level of understanding of what it does, which is basically from my understanding is instead of having a backlight, which is kind of glaring, and then you let it pass through RGB or whatever the cell might be, depending on which technology is used on a normal panel, um, that the reflective LCD is supposed to have a reflective layer that magically captures and bounces off, bounces off and captures and bounces off the light and photons until it amplifies them enough so that it can bounce them back to you 
against i assume now this is a complete assumption so i know that, I, I know that reflective part but what happens afterwards i have no idea but it has to go through some kind of color filter and reach the eyes of the viewer but the main difference is that the light that's being captured and bounced around is from your environment and it's not an artificial one that's generated by um, some kind of a lamp 100 percent, 100 percent. Cool. The monitor has no light source whatsoever that emits light in it. It captures ambient light completely. Um, but that's that's exactly right. And uh, the LCD component is similar to uh, a backlit LCD, but it's the mechanism of the light coming through. So you're right on. Okay. So so does it bounce the light inside? Does it have a uh, is it a direct like a reflection, or does it also bounce it around to kind of amplify it and then push it put it um, out? I'm just curious. It's, it's closer to a direct reflection than um, mm. capturing it and trying to, to go that way. There is um, some fundamental changes to the light that occur, but mm. that's the magic part of it that people with degrees longer than my name know all <laughs> yeah. about. Um, yeah, it, it, it is closer to a more direct reflection of the ambient light. So you'll, you'll notice it when, if you put a light source on it. It's pretty immediate with the difference. Yeah, yeah. So, I'm very much looking forward to that. Nice, nice. Um, and then with your um, comparisons too, even with e-ink and some of the other uh, technologies out there, when you do direct comparisons, have you had thoughts about how those perform against each other or have you had an idea of how you gauge each of those uh, types of technology against each other? Yeah, I mean, there's actually currently like even as as niche the e ink uh, uh, type of products and the category of products is, there's like a fierce fight going on currently um, because the market is actually growing and you have the emergence of dedicated e ink displays, not a tablet, just a display which is still monochromatic, still slow, or a little bit fast. Now that's where it depends. So you have, but the, the market is so limited that you literally have two products out there for a dedicated e-ink display, which is one is from, um, yeah, it doesn't matter. But when you actually compare the two, um, you basically can see, again, uh, engineering solutions, different approaches, better approaches, how to extract the maximum out of the technology, because they get the same panel. But it's incredibly interesting to see what different teams with a different mindset and a different focus and different talents can extract from that technology. And the very interesting thing for me, at least, was to see that it's not like a, a black and... <laughs> Pun, no pun intended. It's not a black and white picture. Uh, <laughs> sorry, it really sorry. It was not intended. But um, it's not a simple matter. It's more uh, one product is going to excel in one area. The other one is going to be excelling at speed. The other one at contrast. The other one at user uh, uh, interface. The another one is going to be better at interactivity or maybe compatibility. So unfortunately, there's no ideal product yet. You just have like this kind of. Uh, situation where you have to dig around and find the best compromise uh, still. And that's why I think these reviews are important because, you know, these e-ink devices cost like between $800 and $1,300 for a 13.3 inch monochromatic slow display. So if you're going to dish out that amount of money and the resources that you can see are either just pure marketing blurbs or a re you know, kind of reread marketing kind of things, and very few uh, opportunities um, to, to, to have a proper hands-on approach. So that's where the responsibility part comes as well. So the comparison part is quite interesting, I think. And that's why I have generally no idea where the SVD and the reflective LCD will stand because I've never seen one, I've never experienced one yet. Um, and again, adds a little spice of excitement for me because is it going to be more like a traditional one, e-ink, where, where in this gradient will it fit? So that's something that I'm very, very interested to see. Yes, yes, and we're very excited to, to get to that. Um, I'm going to hold you on that for one second because, again, your channel provides a, a very good bridge between the manufacturer and the consumer on what is new and what it means to the industry from the consumer level from 
our standpoint too, on the manufacturing side to tech team that um, we are just as excited that more people are aware of reflective technology, whether it's an e-ink or um, even our product. It's the fact that there's a higher awareness, more dollars are being spent to research and innovate. And so there are more options out there for people. Uh, I don't want to limit our uh, support of that in general. And I think you'd agree with me. Um, it, yours is just more on the consumer side and ours is on the manufacturing side. So yeah. when we see those different attempts, even if they do uh, have to make compromises because the tech may not be exactly where we want it to be yet, um, it's still innovative. It's still exciting. And um, it only drives us to go farther and push ourselves. But uh, that, again, is why your following and, and your channel is so important because it helps people not get discouraged if they have an e-ink or they have something they believe is a little slower and they want it to be more. You can, again, with things like this, you can tell people that, yeah, there are other developments or um, come take a look at this option and this is how you can gauge it. So and I think it's a really important point that you brought up there. Um, yeah, and, and here's like a, a example from last week. Um, there was, uh, I live in Norway, right? So we just had like six months of winter, not complete darkness, but ice and snow and minus, right? And uh -huh. finally, there was like a sunny day and I was working on my laptop. And, you know, when you spend enough time in Norway, when you see sun outside, it's like an almost like a mandatory obligation to get outside. <laughs> and by force of habit, I just took my laptop and got out to continue working. And I couldn't see a thing nothing like and i completely forgot about that aspect because of the four or five months but because of that if i didn't have an e-ink device that could actually then you know kind of just pick it up and put a another uh, um, yeah uh, 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 keyboard and everything else and then transform that into a portable laptop then suddenly it's not a problem and i'm just working outside and I'm enjoying the nature, I'm enjoying the birds, I'm enjoying the sun, uh, getting my vitamin D and all that kind of stuff, and still getting my work done and my eyes are happy. So that's a big deal because this technology, this what we're talking through right now, it's a great laptop, but it stands absolutely no chance when exposed to the force of deep sun. So, and and I really like one of your videos when you're talking about we have this, I think I'm paraphrasing, but you were saying that we have this amazing source, energy source that's not being used. And that struck a chord with me very, very strongly because it's a very much of an obvious kind of a thing once you start to consider it. Sure, when you when you frame it, you know, it's 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 almost as if not only do we have it in abundance, we're trying to fight it. We're literally trying to compete with it as if we can. And we end up losing that battle more often than not. Um, but again, and to your point, we do have um, a lot of interest in people trying to use our monitors for outdoors. Um, and that's where our background came from. We're an outdoor digital signage product line. Um, and it was people who knew about uh, not only reflective technology, but some people who had more awareness of visual needs or just the impact of what reflective technology can bring that they said to, to talk about a, a desktop style monitor. And so while we were aware of things like sunlight readability or the power consumption, there were also, um, you know, portability and, and things like that for an indoor monitor. So we kind of came in from, from that angle, but uh, the same way, I mean, when the sun shines, people want to be outside and they want to feel healthy. Um, and so it's, it really came to where we're at now, um, which again, without, without further ado, uh, you have been so good and gracious to, to wait, to open the, the technology again for objectivity, because, um, you know, we wanted to talk to you before you had even opened that box to kind of capture everything up to this point. Um, you're arguably one of the most experienced end users that we've had the privilege to talk to before they've seen our tech and and there's no going back right so once you see it you see it and uh yeah. you know, we're, you, well, no matter what it's uh it's gonna be very exciting so can you walk us through a little bit about your thoughts right now what how you're feeling about the the monitor or expectations that you think may well um i i i have to kind of say that my expectation i'm a little bit afraid because my expectations are high 
<laughs> That's the thing. So uh, why do I say that I'm afraid of that? Because then I know that I have to use the brake pedal in my brain to keep on the objectivity and everything here. But I am, this is something that I'm very much excited about because one thing, uh, things that I'm expecting, I expect this to be light. I expect this to uh, be able to work in cloudy conditions and room conditions as well that I can actually use it without the need for a light shining on it, hopefully. Um, I'm not sure what the power consumption on this one currently is, but I do know that the technology somewhere along the way, maybe not this first iteration, but somewhere along the way, the hope is because you probably know, definitely know, that the biggest consum power consumption is that backlight, and which basically just sucks up all of the energy. And if you have an option to actually, you know, slap a, a, a big light panel, display panel into your backpack and you go and you go to a tracking or whatever, there are like tiny laptops that you can put into like a Raspberry Pi or whatever you want to have. And now... The biggest hurdle has always been, I love to hike. So the biggest hurdle was always a display panel because you have to have a power cable, you have to have this, et cetera, et cetera. So the Air LCD technology would kind of bridge the gap that I currently have, which is I want to enjoy technology and comfort of technology in nature. And that's something that I can't do uh, I could do it with the e-ink partially, but with the limitations that that technology brings. And my hope is basically that I can maybe someday uh, soon with a panel like that, go up to one of the mountains that I like to kind of um, go up and then whip up from my backpack that hasn't really weighed me down with 10 kilos and write something up like impressions or something that I had in the moment. So that's basically what I'm thinking from a personal side of things. From a professional side of things, I'm hoping that even though I understand that this is the first iteration that I'll ever that I've I'll see, this is the first time I'll see it. As such, I'm trying to keep my expectations realistic because I know that every first uh, attempt and every early adoption of technology will absolutely necessary. It's a, it's unavoidable. It will carry with it some lessons to be learned, right? Or some things to kind of correct and fine tune and kind of find a direction. So I'm not expecting it to be perfect. That's that's the number one thing. So what I'm realistically expecting is that uh, there are probably going to be some things that I might not be super happy with, maybe on the connectivity side of things or kind of this kind of real world panel type of things but i'm hoping that the heart of it the core of it what it actually is which is that panel that technology that you're representing is going to be the thing that's going to say like yeah these things are so so there are some things that i really like there are things, some things that are so so but overall this thing kind of makes the takes the takes the cake right so that's my that's where i'm from that's great. That's great. Basically, if it all boils down to one question, it's a yes or no. We want it to be a yes, but that's how it, it, it goes. And I think that that's also uh, very indicative of a lot of people who we have talked to. Um, we embrace the skepticism because we know that we're introducing something very different than has been out there. And people have teased similar types of products, but um, haven't been able to deliver them for one reason or another. And uh, we're not knocking that, but we understand that that history comes with skepticism. So. Um, we've been encouraged by people who have seen the monitor and then validated the questions, but it doesn't mean we don't encourage it. Um, I think that the, the beauty of the humanity there is we can somehow in our brains balance a lot of excitement and doubt at the same time that we were looking at one single thing. So it's, uh, it's definitely perfectly natural. And, um, you know, the more we identify it beforehand, we'll be able to validate it if there is. When it's been in front of us, so we, we enjoy hearing that. So, and I can't wait to look back at this in a couple of weeks. So, <laughs> definitely. Well, one thing that keeps me optimistic is that the first ones who are actually releasing this technology is SVD, which is basically a company that has a background in displays. 
right? And it's not somebody who has a background in tablets. It's not somebody who has a background in phones or something like that. It's somebody who has a background in displays. And that's something that makes me very, very excited because the experience, the mindset, the everything comes from a completely different perspective. So your approach to this product is going to be very different than if Samsung did it, even though Samsung makes TVs, yes, I understand, but they would do it and they do displays as well. Yes, I understand. But that was not the, it's a different perspective. So that's what I'm kind of hoping for to see in the, in the, in the panel that is right there in the box. <laughs> sure. And to, um, to offer even part of our perspective and show that, this is a new product for our company as well. And even the indoor cell monitor is a, um, a different application than we initially even thought. And so there is a little bit of vulnerability on our side, if I could shed some light as to, you know, what it's like for us when we launch a product and talk to individuals to see what it's like. We have the same kind of butterflies every single time somebody looks at our product because it's a question mark. As much as we may have seen it work in the past, it doesn't mean it will in the future. Um, but one of the, the constant things that we rely on is the feedback from the consumer base. We've acknowledged since the beginning that this product, this indoor monitor, would not have been a thing if it wasn't for the support and the communication from the consumer base. Not because we were intentionally withholding it, but we were just also trying to work on outdoor digital signage and working on disrupting that industry when opportunity came knocking. And so um, we were very excited to listen. I think it takes 10 seconds. If you talk to one person who um, has had a background in reflective or understands the application, you'll understand why this, this type of technology needs to continue to be developed, um, both for an ind indoor and an individual use. So uh, we also have our questions. It's just, it's part of the process and it's, uh, it's just as exciting on our end, but it's, uh, we look forward to it as well. Well, I would just add one more thing to kind of tie into what you just said, like people who are aware or becoming aware of reflective LCD technology, not just them. That's why it's exciting. And I'm really excited that you guys had the bravery to actually take a very risky step, which is here's a brand new piece of technology and we're going to bring it to a consumer indoors, which is the PC market like. Wow. <laughs> Talk about butterflies, <laughs> like really big butterflies. But when I talked to my girlfriend and she's now studying some really intensive things and reading a lot and she is saying like, oh my God, my eyes are going to just kind of drop off. And after 10 hours of studying, reading behind a laptop, she has issues and it's like, oh, well, I need to change my glasses, things like that. And when... I talked to her, it's like, I'm going to have an interview with these guys and it's going to kind of be interesting. It's going to be, so what's that big box? Oh, that's that thing, blah, blah, blah. So what is that thing? Oh, it's a, actually a PC screen that doesn't glow at you and it just works like a, should be close to a newspaper kind of thing and just absorbs it's like immediately her reaction. She's not super techie. She has no idea what reflective LCD is or cares about that, which is fine. But her reaction to the idea of a product like that was, oh, my God, give it to me now, like literally. So I, I would just say that there it does extend to um, a lot of people who simply don't have an alternative to this. And there is a need. There is a genuine need for people who you know, don't play games. They don't want to play games, but they want to study. They want to do research. They want to do work you know all of these kinds of things so yeah hopefully this is this is the product that kind of steers the industry in that direction that's that's my ultimate hope basically to tie into what my hopes are is that this is the genesis of a turning point when we will see in 10 years time uh, reflective lcd technology becoming a standard as leds are now and all it is becoming mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Every, every one of these, and we consider ours the same, is a step in the direction. It's, it, there's always a part of that process, but yeah, we are excited. And, and to your point, too, yes, it was, it's a little intimidating to jump into the PC and monitor market, but we had a 32-inch bat, and we came with it. So <laughs> we said, here you go. And, and it's been 
it's been uh, relatively well accepted. So um, in terms of next steps, um, like we said, you, you haven't seen the monitor yet. Um, you're going to go into your review process, which is the whole uh, uh, reason why, you know, you, we're doing this and to have your fans uh, see your genuine reaction. But um, if you could walk us through again, you had said that your process is a couple weeks long. You're going to take a look at it day in, day out, and then you'll be releasing that content. Um, is there anything else about the, the process or do you want to encourage people to send suggestions to you or do you want to... Um, yeah, I, I basically already am. Uh, I recently launched a Discord uh, channel for my deep guide where tons of people have signed up and that's like super power nerdy kind of thing where you are able to ask questions and things like that. So definitely I'm going um, gonna to make a video where I'm s announcing this, what's going to happen, right? And there's going to be also the unboxing video where I'm just going to unbox it and, and have a first impression video without doing a in-depth review. I think those are going to be good places to, to actually encourage people to ask the questions uh, that they might be interested in so that I know as well. I know what I'm interested in, right? But that's only one perspective. And this is why it helps to actually hear so many different perspectives and those that I can, some I won't be able to because, you know, it's maybe objectively impossible, but those that I can uh, fulfill, I will try to do that and see how this piece of technology kind of uh, performs in those things. And that's going to be my goal, to try and look at this new piece of technology from as many different perspectives as possible and offer an objective kind of review of it uh, yeah, for people to see. Excellent, excellent. And, and I know we're, we're definitely looking forward to that content um, as well. Once that video uh, is released, we're going to be doing a post-style interview similar to this, and we'll regroup and kind of go through some of the same, you know, questions, but now you'll have a different perspective, a very different perspective on, on the product. So very much looking forward to that and uh, this whole process. So again, um, we want to Thank you for your time today to even help us announce the collaboration. Um, it's definitely a question I have probably fielded several times per day since we've launched the monitor a couple months ago. So I'm very excited to now tell people, yes, we are working with you because I have not confirmed that yet and uh, very much look forward to the content that follows. Definitely. So I'm I'm really looking forward to actually seeing, um, like how what kind of a memory is this going to remain in this conversation? Because I'm looking at you on what I perceive like an old type of screen, right? The glowing type of screen. So already in my mind, it's like I'm seeing that this is going to be a memory, and I can't wait to actually kind of open it up and see it for the very first time because yeah, of all the reasons that we talked about. So I'm definitely looking forward to the whole process of reviewing it, using it, sharing that with people, and especially that post opening and usage interview to kind of combine and compare the impressions because not often do you get a, a for me, I'm privileged. I definitely feel privileged and thank you for that to have the opportunity to test this out and to actually see this piece of technology because it's very new. It's difficult to get by because great, you are selling it out, which is a good point. But um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm, um, I'm in a privileged position to have an early look at this kind of technology. And it's a genuine, could be a genuine transformative type of a moment. So that's why I'm uh, hoping to share that impression, those impressions with you as well afterwards too. Excellent. Excellent. Well, thank you again. And to everybody, stay tuned. More content is definitely coming from Sun Vision Display and My Deep Guide. So stay tuned again, and we'll talk to you very soon. Bye.